Hey everyone, we've been looking at scripture over the last couple of videos about what is the church. And when we read scripture, we see that the church is described in different ways. And this helps us because it, it shares with us what the church is and what the church should be doing. And so today we're going to look at one of my favorite principles of the kingdom of God and of the church. And I'm going to start in Psalm chapter 86. Here's what it says. There is no, there is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. And Sheol just simply means grave. So God has delivered my soul from the grave. Now, here's the principle, and it's found in, in verse 8. It says, all the nations have made, all the nations you have made shall come and worship before you. So a lot of times when we look at scripture, we think, oh, it's the nation of Israel, and then it's those Christians, and um, I might not be, you know, I've met people that say God would never be for them. You know, it's for those people over there, and God loves everybody except for me. But but here's the principle. Even when Israel, when, when God was using Israel to bring the Messiah, to bring Jesus, to bring the Christ, to bring the message of salvation for all people, even embedded in that is that this idea that the kingdom of God is for everyone. Everybody is invited. In fact, when you look at Isaiah chapter 66, this is another verse that kind of talks about this. And at the time, they had the tabernacle, and, and that's where the priests and the Levites and, and all the people that would kind of facilitate the offerings, that's where they would do their work before God. But here's what it says in verse 21, it says, And some of them also, and this is a section of Scripture talking about how um, God will bring people from all nations and out of this, all those nations, he says, and some of them also I will take for priests and Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth that I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your offspring and your name remain. From new moon to new moon, from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares the Lord. So here's what it is. Here's the big picture is that Everyone, this isn't just for a select few, this is for everyone. Everyone is invited to this kingdom. But look at what he says in this little in this little moment here. He says, So shall your offspring and your name remain. In other words, it's not just simply that you're, you become part of the kingdom of God. It's not just that you become part of the nation of God. It's that you become part of his offspring. And so if you have if we look further than in scripture in Romans 8, I, I think that this kind of speaks to this really well in chapter 8 verse 12 it says so then brothers we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live for all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received the spirit of of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. You see, it's giving this, uh, us this picture that when we become part of the family of God, that we are connected with each other by the Spirit, and we're also connected to God by the Spirit, and we have the ability to go to God and, and have a personal relationship with God that he is our father in heaven and not a distant father, but an ever present father. In fact, the term Abba just simply means daddy. So when we think about that, it's, it's not this father who's aloof and who's gone all the time, but it's a father who is present and there's a relationship the same way that a toddler would have a relationship with his father and wrestle and play and, and all the things that go with that. And in verse 16, it says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. So that's the metaphor that we see today is that when someone surrenders their life to Christ, they become part of the family of God. So the church is the family of God and we are heirs with Christ and God is our father. So the question that should drive us then is that as a family, are we accepting of people? In other words, do we have the same message that 
that God has for the nation of Israel, that his kingdom is for everybody, do we have that same message in our church, that, that this gospel message is for everybody. Everybody has the opportunity to surrender their lives to Christ and become part of the family of God. Okay, have a wonderful day and God bless.